Please gather your communion elements as we get ready to remember and honour Jesus together. Communion is responding to Jesus in obedience. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 26 tells us, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And when we do this, we also acknowledge and remember the sacrifice Jesus made on the cross of Calvary. God mentions food and drink many times, as recorded in the Bible. And I believe God is wanting us, as his children, to consider more depth of meaning from the communion and the relevance of the bread and the wine. Wine is mentioned 231 times in the Bible, and bread is mentioned around 500 times. In this message, our focus is on the significance of the bread. Bread was a staple in biblical times, and still is now, but the meaning of bread in the Bible is so much more than just what we eat. Bread is nourishment for the body, but Jesus, our bread of life, offers spiritual bread that feeds us spiritually. It brings our souls to life and offers a way to salvation. In the Old Testament, we see how God supplied manna from heaven for his people when the Israelites were in the wilderness. In Exodus 16 verse 4 we read, Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. We know from the Bible that it wasn't exactly bread as we understand it to be today, nor how people in biblical days knew it. In fact, they'd never seen anything like it. But they were able to use this strange manna to make bread, delicious bread. Manna is described as like small round substance, like coriander seeds. Exodus 16 verse 14 reads, And when the layer of dew lifted, there, on the surface of the wilderness, was a small round substance, as fine as frost on the ground. Numbers 11 verse 7 to 8 says, The manna looked like small coriander seeds, and it was pale yellow like gum resin. The people would go out and gather it from the ground. They made flour by grinding it with hand mills, or pounding it in mortars. Then they boiled it in a pot and made it into flat cakes. These cakes tasted like pastries baked with olive oil. It was also described as delicious like honey. Exodus 16 verse 31 says, And the house of Israel called its name manna, and it was like white coriander seed, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. What God provides for us to eat is very good. In the case of the manna, it was literal food. This is an example of God's provision. And in the uncertain days to come, we can be assured that God will provide our needs physically and spiritually. Psalm 34 verse 8 tells us to, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Now, our beautiful Saviour, our bread of life. As this name suggests, he provides bread that leads to eternal life, forgiveness and freedom. In John 6, verse 32 to 33, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. The Hebrew for Bethlehem where Jesus was born is two words, Bet, meaning house of, and Lehem, meaning bread. So Bethlehem means house of bread. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, the house of bread. No wonder he declared in John 6, verse 35, 
I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. The communion supper is a literal offering we are instructed to partake of, to proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And we should take this communion often, at church, in our own homes, with family and friends, with the sick and dying. The word communion means an interchange, an intimate communication, sharing of thoughts and emotions, being close to someone, desiring to spend time with them. So also, every day should be a continual communication, communing with God, feeding on His Word, feasting on His goodness, abiding in Him. The word abide means to remain, continue, and stay with. Jesus says to abide with me, to be with him every day, to commune with him on a daily basis. This brings us back to how God supplied the manna from heaven. It's interesting that he only supplied enough for a day, and the Israelites were told they must gather more the next day. Perhaps that is also guidance for us, that we need to gain sustenance from God daily. In Matthew 6 verse 11, Jesus instructed us to pray and ask, Give us this day our daily bread. That means to keep refueling, refilling every day, just like the Israelites gathered the manna every day. We are meant to live on this earth, yes, but only as visitors passing through, travelling in the wilderness, and like the Israelites, daily gaining sustenance from our Heavenly Father every day, always hungry for the things of God and looking forward to our heavenly home. Jesus says in Matthew 5 verse 6, Those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be filled. Bread is one of the most filling things we can eat. As a child, I loved bread and was told by my parents not to eat bread before dinner as it would ruin my appetite. What is it like to be full after having a good meal? When we're full, our appetite is satisfied and we don't look for anything else to satisfy us, particularly anything unhealthy. Speaking to the church in Corinth, Paul talks about the leaven of the world permeating the church. So in these times when the world is becoming increasingly steeped in sin, as individuals we must remain abiding in him to protect ourselves and the body of Christ as a whole. In 1 Corinthians 5 verses 6 to 8 we read, Don't you know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old yeast, so that you may be a new unleavened batch, as you really are. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore let us keep the festival, not with the old bread leavened with malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. If we feast so much on wholesome daily bread from heaven, through sincere daily communion with Him, abiding in Him, will our spiritual appetite be so satisfied that there'll be no more room for anything else? Would we not lose our appetite for worldly pleasures and be too full to eat the spiritual garbage that the world continually tries to entice and tempt us with? In Luke 4 verses 2 to 4 we read, about Jesus being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterward he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Deuteronomy 8 verse 3 also tells us, that the literal manna from heaven 
had an even more important lesson for us. Yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna, a food previously unknown to you and your ancestors. He did it to teach you that people do not live by bread alone, rather we live by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Bread is nourishment for the body, but Jesus offers spiritual bread that feeds our spiritual lives. It brings our souls to life and offers a way to salvation. The Lord is showing us through his word that the truth is, the things of this world will grow strangely dim as we look to the cross and turn our eyes upon Jesus, the bread of life. Isaiah 26 verse 3 to 4 tells us, You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord the Lord himself is the rock eternal. Now, please hold the communion elements and as we pray, let's fix our eyes upon Jesus, remembering that he is the bread of life, the living water and the rock eternal. Let's desire to eat from him and to drink from him, to revere and honour him, remembering that he is where our daily bread comes from the spiritual bread of our salvation. He set us apart for him. We are his bride. He sacrificed his life for his bride. He is the son of the living God who gave up his life for us, redeeming us from sin and death. Now, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your words. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. So as we take the bread representing your life that was broken for us, we remember and celebrate your faithfulness and the love you have for your children and your willingness to suffer for all of us so that we might live. Jesus, we offer our thankful hearts to you. Your death and resurrection changed everything for mankind. And when we abide in you daily, you provide good, wholesome, spiritual food. And with that comes peace and a strength to overcome the world. Thank you for your extravagant love and unmerited favour. And Lord Jesus, in the same way as we take this cup, representing your blood poured out for our redemption, we know, Lord, that you are our living water and you made that supreme sacrifice for all our sins, past, present and future. Because of your blood shed and your body broken, we can be free from the bondage of this world. We no longer belong to this world and our home is in heaven. Thank you for destroying the chains of death. You took the death that we each deserved and today we remember and celebrate the precious gift of life you gave us through your body that was broken and your blood that was shed. We shall proclaim your death until you come. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are our bread of life and in your precious name we pray. Amen. Please partake of the communion in your own time and God bless you as you continue to abide in Jesus our Saviour, who is our bread of life, our salvation.